Howdy everybody in YouTube land. What we have in front of us today is a cardboard box. No, I'm just kidding. Yet another Color Classic analog board. These things are dropping like flies now. I'm seeing it everywhere I go. So it's only a matter of time before all available ones are not going to be working anymore. Anyway, so this one has seen a potential flyback failure. I don't know 100% without a doubt. But, um, yeah, all of these parts were removed. And I figured I would do a video on it. Now, I took some of these out myself because I wanted to test to make sure that they were good. But I figured, well, I gotta start working on this thing again, so I might as well pick up the camera and do that. So, what do we have here? Oh, insulators. Okay, so the story behind this one is the board was really burnt and it seems to be a common problem with these where the Zener diodes go. Now, everything, as far as I'm aware of, was recapped. So the board is very burnt there, and we have an issue here. Those resistors have been replaced, and the diodes have been replaced. Um, the horizontal output transistor did fail. It was replaced and it ran for a little bit, it started doing some weird things and then the transistor failed again. Outside of that, I do not know. I have no details. Now, what does concern me in the moment is if we look at these higher voltage electrolytics, they were replaced. Look at the tops on them. They're starting to push themselves out here. Yeah. That one, I can't tell. Yeah, maybe. Now, that might be normal for those particular ones, but that means the, the 200 volts is actually running above 200 volts if that happened. So that means we have no regulation. Why don't we have regulation? I don't know yet. But we clearly have a problem with this board, especially since it was recapped and then all of that fun stuff. But... Yeah, something happened to the Zener diode area, almost as if the flyback did fail. And it was drawing too much current over here. You can see it was patched up. But, um, other than that, you know about it, as much of it as I do. The other thing I've noticed right away is over here. See the solder joints? They're completely broke free. That's an issue. This is the video output IC. So we definitely need to do some soldering work on it. Now, the parts for these boards are getting harder and harder to find. Now, the good news is, um, there was a few of these boards that popped up on eBay from the LC550 and 575 series that I um, decided to just grab they were cheap enough on ebay 20 bucks 25 bucks a piece i grabbed all four the guy had because of this reason right here these are unobtainium and they're going bad i mean look at the cracking going on here that very well could be the issue this thing failed it got hot cracked failed shorted internally or something going on internally with this guy and it's causing all of these problems so this likely is the cause and it's going to have to be replaced. Now, I did ring check this and it actually tested good, but that doesn't test it under a load. So, and then the focus, um, the focus screen divider network is in this cover. So, yeah. All right. Yeah, that's it. So, the 575 and 550 boards, the parts are interchangeable. And luckily, the supply of those are somewhat easier to get than these because of two reasons. One, people ship these machines and they get smashed all to pieces, so they're junk anyways. And two, people steal the logic boards out of those to put them in the Color Classic. So that leaves plenty of analog boards behind. So we'll just use the analog boards as, a, as an organ donor to make this thing work again. 
Um, I took the rear cover off and I didn't see anything stand out over here. But we certainly have issues going on there. I got to double check those diodes and make sure they're correct. I think they are. I didn't put them in there. But I'm hoping they are anyways. I don't know off the top of my head what the original ones are. But uh, yeah, the jungle I see is here. Hopefully it's not bad. And if it is, I have some. And vertical output's here. And the video output is here. So, all right. One thing I did do was I pulled all of these parts off. So this is shorted, I'm pretty sure. That's gone. I don't know if I have any more on hand. I'll have to check. I'll have to pull one off the parts board. And then I checked all of these capacitors. These are the safety caps and snubbing capacitors that go in the horizontal output and high voltage stage. And they were good. They were not open. Horizontal drive transformer. I checked it. It's also good. The damper diode's good. And the um, this film cap here was okay. The flyback ring checked okay. But who knows. So I think what I need to do next is I need to grab my parts board and start taking parts off and then see how this thing performs once I get all the parts moved over. But before I do, I'm going to check all, dry check all these other little components in here and make sure we don't have any shorts. The other thing too is if this regulator I see, because this regulates the high voltage and also does the x-ray protection. So if this is bad or has an issue, high voltage will run away, which also means the secondary output voltages will run away and we're going to have all kinds of trouble. So I don't have any reference voltages here to know if that's operating properly. So we're just going to have to play this by ear. And through the Ferengi acquisitions of eBay, I have my parts board. I have four of these I picked up cheap. So I'm going to take the flyback off of this one and any other parts I might necessarily need and move it over to here. And uh, yeah, so hopefully that solves my problem. The other concern that I have is my B plus adjustment screw. It's kind of, it's got that circuit glue in it that turns corrosive. So I'm wondering if that's even bad too. That one's okay. But that one, not so much. I might replace that. So yeah, because if this wavers all over the place you're going to cause all it's yeah there's so many there's so many potential issues here that i have to work through one by one all right i got the flyback transformer off i did take off the original horizontal output transistor as well as this adjustment potentiometer that sat right here now if i look at the flyback that i just recovered there's no cracking or anything it actually looks in really good condition compared to the original one over here which is yeah it's seen a lot of heat it's not it's bad so we're gonna go ahead and move that out of my way and start putting the parts back onto the other board and hope by some miracle that it actually works this is a transistor that was in there MJW16206 it's the same one but that almost looks like a fake compared to this one. These were eBay purchases, so are you surprised? I'm not. So I'm gonna put the original one back in there. I think I see what led to the flyback failure because look, so we have a voltage point here. If we follow it, comes up and supplies power to the horizontal drive transformer. But if we follow the resistor that goes from here to here, it supplies power up through these bridge rectifiers, or not bridge rectifiers, Zener diodes that get hot. So I got to fix that and make sure that's solid. But it provides that, but if we follow that, it comes all the way around to this point here, but also down into this filter network, which feeds power to this regulator. So if this is missing power, it may not shut down and the high voltage will run away, which will lead to flyback failure. So yeah, that's a problem. If this circuit isn't solid, you're going to lose 
the transformer so just that's my that's my current guess right now with how this is laid out alrighty I got the new flyback well new flyback installed and I took care of a bunch of things as far as the solder joints here I did this I don't really care for this a whole lot because of the creepage distance but I got that mechanically secured now secured over here I took care of the solder joints in a lot of places they were really bad and flybacks in all these parts in but more importantly these terminal here's were broke free well that is the connector that goes to the fan you can see the pins here so that makes sense now the picture's starting to become more clear because if those were broken free which of these two were um, that'll cause the fan to be intermittent and if the fans intermittent this will overheat and fail explains the issues I have going on here so all right um resoldered the transformers took care of some joints over here that were um problematic I didn't do anything with the regulator yet but now this guy is assembled so I've got to do some quick soldering over here and that's it I can test this board I got the I got the parts back in there that I pulled out for testing flyback transformers installed um yeah as far as I can tell I don't see any other issues so I'm going to go ahead and start getting this back together really and we're going to test this guy which I'm not going to button it all the way back up because if there's still a failure I, don't, I need to have the lids and stuff off of everything so um yeah I'm going to go ahead and take care of that and I gotta get a new solder order in. I got some old stuff over here that I got from VCF, but yeah, we'll get this taken care of. All right, I got my machine drug out. I only own one of these. I actually had two of these. Um, one of them, I didn't pay much for it, like 50 bucks, something like that. I got it locally and uh, I gave it away because someone needed it for troubleshooting stuff, but yeah it happened so this one there's a story behind this one um but i'll get into that in another video because this one's this actually still needs restored um yeah one of these days <laughs> so anyways i got it i drug that out so i can actually test this board so i'm gonna go ahead and get this thing apart so i can get all this tested will this work without the bottom cover because i didn't get it nobody knows but we're gonna find out. Oh, well, that's nice. It's missing the thingy. Yeah, that's a that's a bit of a crapper. And it's bent. It's like it's been ripped out. Anyways, all right. There's that one. I gotta get you out of the way here. Okay, and that is the grounding lug which goes here, in case anybody doesn't know, that's where it goes. Will it work? I don't know. Okay. Oh boy, that's a little extra long. Oh yeah, there's a big difference there compared to the original. So, okay. Um, this flyback may not work, but you know what? We're daring in this endeavor. Why the hell not? There. Yeah, it's a little extra. I might have to... Tell you what I might have to do. I might have to move this guy... And then put this guy here. Yeah, that's what we're gonna do. Move you down there and get you out of the way. And then we're gonna. S I really don't like this. No, because a high voltage. All right. Well, good enough. Get the power plug plugged in here. If I didn't bend the cord, I must have stepped on it. There we go. Alright, well, I 
to go get the um, keyboard. No kaboom. All right, let me go get a keyboard. All right. That's what I have at the moment. That's what I'm going to have to use because everything else is buried. I heard high voltage. Do we have anything? Do we have any smoke? Whoa. Okay. Yeah, she's running way too hot. High voltage is way too high. All right, so we need a high voltage adjust. A high voltage circuit is running way, way too hot. Now, I'm pretty sure the flybacks are the same. Maybe they're not. Let's see, what is that one? 1570146. That's, uh, what is that one? 1570149. Yeah, that could be an issue. Not the same. Okay, well, I mean, it did fire up, but the way it was chirping was not good. It's like the high voltage was way too high. The other possibility is, too, we have a bad jungle. That would certainly do it. But I did get high voltage. Let's see, is there a high voltage adjust somewhere on here? Horizontal width, vertical height. Don't know. I'm wondering if it's fixed. So, at this point, I'm going to need to get a high voltage probe. Because i got to make sure this is not over volting. Because the way that sounded... That sounded very much like the high voltage ran away, which will definitely blow things up. So let me figure that out. So the next thing I want to do is, in the further step of troubleshooting, is I want to remove the horizontal output transistor before it gets damaged. Because, yeah, we, we don't need that happening. So what I want to do is I want to check the drive signal coming out. Well, two things really. I want to check the B plus voltage to make sure it's not spiking and doing weird things. But I also want to check the drive signal with an oscilloscope and make sure it's stable because it's generated from this jungle I see back here. So I want to make sure all of that is good and I also want to prevent further damage. So because even though this flyback is slightly different, it may or may not be compatible. I don't entirely know for certain. But considering the old flyback had issues and this one's doing weird stuff, I tend to agree that there's something going on on the board still. So I want to remove this and I want to check the drive signal and I want to make sure everything is good there with the oscilloscope and just kind of keep an eye on what's going on with the drive signals. That should do it, at least I think. I have um, these three wires here. One's ground. One's the power going through the flyback, and then this is the drive signal. So, um, I put them where the horizontal output transistor was. I'm not going to worry about the anode lead and stuff right now because that doesn't matter. None of that matters. I'll clip that on so it doesn't short out with anything. But, uh, yeah, just none of that matters right now. So, I think we're good. So, I'm going to go grab my oscilloscope and we'll watch this. Actually, I take that back. The high voltage regulation must be done in the jungle, I see. Because um, I looked this chip up here just to double check. And that is a um, pin cushion correction I see. So that's not my issue. I can safely ignore that. I thought that was the high voltage regulation. No, that's pin cushion correction. Never mind. So, yeah, I'll let this run for a bit. And that chip got really hot. So I'm starting to wonder. Starting to wonder. 
But the good news is the B plus is stable, so that's not my issue. Our problem is elsewhere. So, well, we're going to have to keep on looking because that horizontal drive signal is just being weird. What I can do is unplug this yoke because that doesn't matter anymore since there's no high voltage anyways. Move that out of my way and find, because it's hard to do this with the board in there, but what I can do is that appears to be the drive transistor. I can hook my scope to that and make sure that everything over there is kosher. Because right now I'm actually technically reading through this transformer. So let's let's check the signal coming out of the chip. So I'm probing the transistor. We have a much higher drive signal, which is to be expected, around 5 volts or so. But same problem, same jitters. So that's the chip doing it. Why the chip is doing it, I don't know yet. It could be a bad chip or it could be one of the circuits inside the chip that's trying to restart the high voltage over and over and over again. Now, I don't have the data sheet to this chip. It's not obtainable, so I'm only guessing here. I can only guess here. So the next move, I think, is to grab a Color Classic board that I know that works, remove the horizontal output transistor, and we'll run similar tests. I grabbed my other oscilloscope just to make sure that my scope wasn't the issue. So I'm looking at the drive signal here. And this one does it too, although it's not as pronounced. Because this scope is a lot slower than the other one. But you can tell it actually looks a lot more stable. But you can see that? See that jump? Yeah, it still does it. It's just this thing's not capturing it as well. Because it's low bandwidth. So, yeah, the other one seems it, sees it a lot better. So, um, yep, something is clearly wrong here. And I'm going to probably grab the board that I own that works. And run the same tests. Because I don't have a data sheet and I need a way to get data points. And this... We know there's a 24 volt input, 19 volt on the Zeners, a roughly 20 volt on the drive transistor, and 74, 75 volts for the rest of the system. So we, we have that, and the video is the documentation of that. So now I want to grab a working board, and I want to run similar tests. I want to see where things are. I want to remove the transistor and do the same thing with it, and see where we are with that board. This one works, so I'm just going to remove the transistor out of that one, and use this as a frame of reference for what voltages need to be and etc. Alright, see this board is unrestored but this one was working so what I'm going to do now is take the same measurements but over here so I didn't color code these this time so I gotta be careful emitters ground, bases drive and there's that one Grab the power cord. This is not fired up in probably several years. Okay. Alright, we're on. Let's see, do we get anything? Come on. There we go. Yeah, it does the same thing. Okay, so that's normal. Frequency still the same. Okay. At least now we know that twitch is normal. Alright, next thing we got to do is we got to measure the voltages and see where we are with that. All right, so I ran all the same voltage checks. Everything is the same, 24, 21, 19 over here by the Zeners, except for the B plus coming out of the flyback, 71.1. So 
it's possible this thing needs to be adjusted to around 70 volts. The other one's a little high. So that might have something to do with it. I doubt it. But all right, that's where we are right now. So yeah, that same twitch is there. We're running at about the same frequency. So, and I know this one works. All right. Well, shut it down. There we go. We've shut it down. Okay, so we ran all the same voltage checks. Everything is the same with the exception of 71 instead of 74 on the other board. So at least we have something we can run comparisons with. Okay, since we know that my board, which is a non-working board, gives me the same results with the horizontal output transistor removed, we can probably assume that the drive coming out of the jungle is good. So, anyways, I got to put the horizontal output transistor back in because I've added a new tool to my arsenal. Right here. So that, for anyone that's not familiar, is a high voltage probe. I don't know if it's good yet. I got it sold as is on eBay. But this is literally designed to go up underneath the anode lead and check the voltage output from the transformer. The flyback transformer. So, that... I'm going to check this good board so I'll know, on top of what I've said previously in the video, I'll know what the expected high voltage output is supposed to be. So then when I fire up the other board again, I can measure it and make sure we're still within spec. Disclaimer though, if you don't know what you're doing, don't do this. But I semi know what I'm doing here, but this is the first time I've used a high voltage probe in this magnitude so we're gonna find out I'm trying to find a good ground here that looks like as good as any all right so I got a ground lead so we are gonna get that up under here all right so I gotta get up it's hard to thing on. Alright, so here we go. What do we get? Darkened to ground, but I got just shy over 20 kilovolts. So, yeah, this is um, the insulation on that might not be very good, but um, doesn't concern me at all. But yeah, it's very, very close to ground. So I need a better way to. Yeah. Anyways, you saw we got just shy, shy over 20 kilovolts, which actually is normal that's normal for this this is what i expected it to be roughly around 20 kilovolts so we know where we got to be with that and we noticed we didn't get a strong electric discharge like we did with the other board so at this point i need to put the horizontal output transistor back in the other board and we're going to take a similar measurement and see where we are but i need both of my hands to do this because I've got to be quick to react to shut the power off when something goes wrong. Like, it was arcing a little bit there, but I wasn't really concerned as much. Um, yeah, I've got to be Johnny on the spot with the other board, though, because the high, I believe the high voltage is going to be running away on that one. I got, I did this off camera because I don't have a tripod handy, but I was able to get the probe at the proper angle so it wasn't arcing the ground. And my point of voltage was right at 22 kV, almost exactly on that line. So we've got 22 kilovolts being produced by this board. And when I cut the power off, I watched it drain all the way down to zero, and that's how I knew the CRT was discharged so I could pull the anode. So 
All right, so the good board, we got 22 kV, so let's switch over to the bad board. All right, I got the horizontal output transistor on the other board in this incredibly long lead because it came out of the 550, 575 board. But uh, everything's in place. I got to get the high voltage probe hooked up and then we're going to do another check and see where this one is. But I need both hands because I got to be Johnny on a spot to cut this power switch off if something's wrong. So I did a quick measurement real quick and it started arcing on me so I had to be super fast about it. But my uh, high voltage was all the way up here in the red at 25 kV which is way high. We're supposed to be in the 22 kV mark, so it running 25 kV is the reason why this board's not operating properly. Now, could be the flyback, because like I said, this is a slightly different flyback. So, it's possible this flyback is wound to run at 25 kV, because it's meant for the bigger tube. So, the only way to roll that out is to... Um, put a color classic flyback in here and see what it does now the trouble is if that's what it is i'm not sure what to do now there's a way to clamp down the high voltage by modifying the values of these safety capacitors so these capacitors are designed to snub out the spikes and it will clamp down the high voltage to a degree um, i could probably reduce the B plus output because the B plus is 74 volts on this and we're supposed to be somewhere around 71. So if I drop the B plus, I can drop the high voltage as well. Um, I don't know if this uses a feedback loop. Some systems do. I don't know if this one actually does, but the high voltage is certainly too high. Um, so we need to bring that down. All right, I got the flyback replaced with a known good one from an actual color classic machine so that's going to tell me if there's an issue with that anyways so now it's time to do some checks and see if the high voltage has come back to normal just to see if it's a flyback incompatibility that's exactly what it was i put the new transformer in and the flyback was just between 20 and 22 so about 21 kilovolts so this is two this is about a kilovolt lower than my other board so yeah it's a flyback difference so in order to run the other transformer in these boards we're going to have to reduce the incoming b plus to drop the high voltage output so clearly it's a winding ratio difference between the two transformers doesn't mean it's not workable there's ways around that. But anyways, we've got a bigger problem. And that is we have no raster going to the, to the um, display. So we got to determine what's going on with that. So yeah, it's, it's running now. So oh, I just heard the high voltage kick up. It didn't come up nearly as it's strong as it did the first time around. And this is a known good transformer, by the way. But clearly, oh, high voltage kicked up. No weird noises. No smoke. I hear the machine booting. But we have no raster. So we're going to need to find out why that is. That's the next order of business. Why don't we have a raster? So, there's some poking in here a little. The wire. No, nope, it's not a wire issue. So, we have no raster. So, we got to find out why that is. But at least now the high voltage is stable. So, we're getting somewhere with that. And we're up. I had to go and adjust the screen control and the focus control. And now we got it. So we are operational. Now the horizontal static and all that's off because, well, that's normal. It's a different CRT. So that would have to be recalibrated based on where it goes. But yeah, we're running. So the problem is the flyback on the board. The board itself is working perfectly fine. Um, so the issue is flyback transformer. The original flyback was bad, which I had a feeling it was. 
because the transistor was shorted before and it replaced and it was making weird noises. But um, anyway, so the flyback off of my parts board that was originally in this machine, but I bought another board, but that's a different story. But yeah, the original flyback that I took off the other board and put in this one works fine. So the issue as of this moment is a bad flyback transformer. Now, the LC550 transformer does not work in here, but I bet it would if I reduce the B-plus that drives the machine. I bet it would. So, here we are. All right, so in an attempt to try to use the other flyback transformer, because the transformer that I had on here for testing is my only one, so I can't give that away or anything. So to use the 550 and 575 transformer in an attempt to try to find a happy medium, we're going to try to adjust the B plus output from this board. So this particular board, there's two power supplies. This is the computer power supply. This is the monitor power supply. The monitor power supply runs all the time. That's why these Zener diodes get baked like this. Even when it's in standby, this runs all the time, okay? So to set this board up safely to adjust it outside the chassis, what we've done is we've done a B plus inhibit. And what that actually means is we removed this jumper lead, which is J48. This contains the B plus to the whole chassis to the horizontal stage. It's been disconnected, so there's no threat of the high voltage coming up on you when it's out of the unit. So now we turn it on. This is gonna come up a little bit. I have this thing turned fully counterclockwise, which you may have to pick out the glue with a pick tool, but once you do, it's turned fully counterclockwise, and that's the B plus. That's where we're sitting it fully counterclockwise. Now, that's as low as it will go without modifying the circuit. So this is where we're going to leave it for now and hope that the high voltage isn't too high. Also, you're going to hear this power supply ticking. That's normal because this is the computer power supply and right now there's no load. So that is normal for this board. So don't be alarmed. Now, if I grab my tool here and I readjust this B plus, you'll see what happens here. It actually raises the B plus. Now, if I turn this down all the way counterclockwise, it's not gonna immediately drop off because once again, this B plus line is not loaded. So we wait for it to settle. Now I'm turning this all the way down and I wanna see how this board works with it all the way down on this transformer. Um, it should be okay, may not be, I don't know, but there's one way to find out. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to wait for it to settle. I'm going to turn the power off. And then I'm going to wait for this to discharge before I start soldering on the things. And then I will solder that jumper lead back in there. And we'll try this board with this transformer. And just to note, this is the type 9 transformer which has a higher turns ratio. That's why the high voltage is higher than it should be, 25 kV. Got the board back in place. The flyback's reinstalled, or the other one with the wires. Much longer than it needs to be, but I can fix that once we know we're good. But um, for now, we need to, once again, check our high voltage, see how it runs within acceptable limits. And yeah, so let me get this prepared, set up. I wish I had a tripod handy right here because in order to do this, I have to put this probe in here and I have to push it almost all the way up because if I get too close to the DAG, it'll arc over from this tip. So, yeah, I can't do that. But, um, yeah, so let me do that real quick. So this time around, I've got... I checked it and it's around 22.5 to 23 kilovolts, so it's better... Still not perfect because I'm hearing like an arc come from somewhere in here. But I don't know where. And that flyback may not be any good either. It's on right now. See what our picture looks like. Do we even have a picture? Yeah, there we go. Uh... 
It's kind of shrunk horizontally. Probably because I got the B plus low. But it's on now. Twerking on the flyback a little. I'm not seeing anything. But I heard it just I heard it to arc a couple of times, so I'm trying to see how this works out. Just the screen. Way high. focus control though so it's strange yeah that's weird let's turn the brightness up yeah okay brightness is all the way up just the screen way high Bring that down a little. Yeah, we're good there. And then, figure out why the focus isn't working. Because I have zero focus control. I think the focus pot's open. I think so. Because I do not have any. It's moving. But it's not. Yeah, I have an open focus pot. That could cause arcing. Yeah, that could be... Yeah, that's definitely screwed. Yeah, I'm going to have to change the focus pot. Alright, well... Let's see, let's hit that. Get out of here. So, I've got to change the focus pot. Yep, focus pot's got to be replaced. So, <laughs> next, let's grab another part, probably from another analog board, or at least the one I stole that from, anyways. Got the uh, focus pot replaced, and it's actually intermittent. Um, anyways, I got it replaced, and it's looking a lot better now. It's not perfect, but it's a lot better. However, we still have the insufficient horizontal width, and I turn the control up, and I start running into pincushion issues, so... It's clearly related to the um, B plus being too low because I tried to get the B plus low, so the high voltage runs at about 22 kV instead of 25. So um, yeah, even even with the reduced high voltage, this thing will make a chirp once in a while, and you'll see the picture jump. So this transformer is still bad because the other transformer that I forget where I put it, but the other transformer doesn't do that. So clearly there's an issue here. So I might have to go to another board and pull another transformer just to rule that out because that transformer could be bad. That might be why that other board was retired because I picked up all the other parts boards off of eBay for cheap. So they were probably all bad. Anyways, <laughs> you never know, but it is running this way. It is running with the LC550 flyback in the Color Classic board, so I just got to get that insufficient width taken care of. Which, I got in order to do that, I got to bring the B plus back up, really. For testing purposes, I brought the B plus back up to where it used to be, and I still have reduced width. So, this thing will still occasionally pop every great once in a while, so there's something wrong with this flyback, but. Beside that point, with this transformer, I have reduced width. The original transformer, I do not. So, there's clearly a resonance difference in this transformer versus the other one. So, that's another issue. Now, I'm noticing on the original board, we have, you know, two 3.3 microfarad 160 volt capacitors. Then we have another one over here that's 160 volt. It's a .0082. 
and resistors I can't really get in there and check. We have that. Now, if we go look at the other board that this came from, which is this board here, let's take a look at these values. First off, we have a difference here compared to that one, but other than that, it's still the same. It's the same design, um, although this one shows a capacitor here, while this one clearly doesn't, so that's a change. Um, this is a newer board anyways. So this one doesn't have the Zener diodes in place like they used to be. So they're running it at the proper voltage. So they don't need that anymore. But perhaps more importantly, we have 2.2 and a 1.8 microfarad capacitor here versus two 3.3s. Now, this is a 640 by 480 board and this is a 512 by 384 board. But even though that's a pretty significant difference, so the tuning has changed over here to compensate for the flyback that was here and is now over there. So um, this value, I don't know if it's the same or not, but I'm beginning to wonder, because I already stole the potentiometer here to go with there. And even though I did that, the focus is still somewhat soft, which is strange to me. So yeah. But this is clearly a parts board. It's not, it doesn't go to any machine. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the deflection parts off of this board. And then really, this is an experimental stage. Um, so I think what I want to do is I want to take all of these parts off that I need, all the capacitors, and move them over here to see what difference it makes with the deflection width and if this continues to pop. Um, yeah, so let's do that. Let's, let's make that change and see what happens. All of the modifications have been made. The parts have been moved over as it were with the other board. The only thing that has not been changed is this R34. This is a 33 ohm. The one on the other board was a 15 ohm. So that goes to the east west correction circuit, which is over here. And I bet some of these resistor values are going to be different too, based on the resolution. So um, anyways, I haven't done anything else yet. Uh, I'm going to see if this dumpster fire works and hopefully it does. Um, the other, the other thing is too, on the 550, they did away with these resistors. So the 24 volts is dropped across this, this resistor. I mean, diodes crap. The 24 volts is dropped across this die or resistor and, and these diodes, but the other board does not have these. This is just a jumper wire and these are gone. So they're shooting the 24 volts straight over to the east-west correction chip on the 550 board, which would probably make sense, sense for 640x480. So if you're running a 640x480 color classic, like if you're going to put a 575 board in there or something, it makes more sense to just redo this color classic board to match that of the 550 board. So move all these components over, do something with the flyback, remove, or like move the flyback over, change all these other components out and modify this stuff over here to get it right, to get it the correct way. So anyways, let's try this thing out. So we're back up and running and it didn't make any difference in the width really. Um, it did, I don't know if it made any difference with it arcing or not. I haven't heard it pop again, but, um, but it didn't make anything worse. Didn't make it any better, but it didn't make any worse. But at least we experimented. We know that this had no effect on the width with this resolution. So right now, it looks pretty good as it is. But yeah, we'll see. It's been on for a minute and it did chirp one time raster jumped a little so there is definitely a problem with that flyback but I did monitor the B plus voltage going in and I remember it being around 72 to 74 unloaded in my previous tests but when it's loaded down it's about 58 to 60 volts so I don't know if the insufficient width is caused by the low B plus or if it's caused by differences in the east west correction circuit or anyways I mean, honestly, it's not too bad as it is. I mean, it's a little shallow, but I tell you, it's better 
than not having anything at all. Because the flyback originally was bad and you wouldn't have anything. So I'd rather have that than nothing at all. So I think I'm inclined to leave it alone and not, you know, not make it worse than what it is. Um, I'm going to monitor the situation with this flyback because if it keeps arcing like an internal chirp, then it's going to have to be replaced with another one. But for now, I'm going to leave it alone. I might adjust the, the voltage a tiny bit to try to get it closer to 60 volts instead of 58 where it is now fully loaded. Monitor the high voltage output and then... Yeah, so I got the timing components in there and all over here from the original board that I took the flyback off of. Um, and it seems to be doing okay with it. It's not complaining about it. So the focus is okay. I got the horizontal static convergence set properly, which is this control right here. So that will have to be all readjusted to the CRT that he has when he gets this board back. But for my CRT, everything is fine. I mean, original, originally the width would have been like right here. So we're short by about a half inch. But um, yeah, I don't, honestly, I'm not really caring a whole lot. It's better than having nothing at all at this point. Um, I don't want to drive the B plus too high because I don't want to make this worse because the high voltage will get higher and 25 kil kilovolts is high for this CRT. So. I'm trying to leave it into the 23 kilovolt range. Um, but yeah, I'm going to leave it alone and possibly take a look at this east-west correction circuit and see maybe the different resistor values in here because I did not move this resistor over. So, And then this value was the same, so I left it alone. But I'm going to leave the east-west correction resistor that's over here I might move that over there. I'm going to check the other resistor values and see if there's any differences there. And if there are, change them and see if this goes away. But right now, I'm inclined to leave it alone. So, anyways. I also wanted to note that the other flyback that I did try it started popping and arcing and jumping right away a lot. And as it ran for a bit, it settled down. So that makes me wonder if... And judging by how the labels look on these, I'm wondering if the, the parts board this, that I bought, someone didn't run them through the dishwasher or something like that. You can't do that with these flybacks. They're, they'll get moisture laden. I mean, there's, there's no such thing as a perfect seal. So that's probably what happened to them. There's moisture in there. And until it all bakes out, it's going to have a chance to do that. So anyways, I just wanted to put that footnote in there too. I tried another flyback just to roll that out, and uh, it's the same thing. I mean, there's a little bit of width insufficiencies, but anyway, so the video basically proves that you can use the LC550, 575, 520 flybacks in the Color Classic with caveats, and this is one of the caveats, is reduced width. There may be a way around it. But I talked to the owner. The owner is fine with that. So we're just going to stop it right here. We're not going to go any further than that. We're just going to leave it alone. So um, anyway, so the board's working. We can use this machine. Everything's good. So I think we can conclude this video at this point. I did swap that resistor out too, and it didn't make a difference. So anyways, um, thank you for watching. If you have a comment, please feel free to leave one. And uh, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, and all that fun stuff. Until next time, guys.